I'm James Richardson from the Agriculture and Food Policy Center at Texas A&M, and I'd like to talk a little bit about our recent visit to Washington, D.C. to present the baseline report to the House and Senate Ag Committees. This is a copy of our baseline report. You can get this by going to our website at afpc.tamu.edu. Then over on the right-hand side, first thing you want to do is click that uh, January 2016 baseline briefing report. This is a short report that has a summary of an outlook for the economic viability of all of our representative farms. I talked about a representative farm process in the last video we put together. Uh, the second uh, new publication on that website is the working paper. And if you more, want more detail about the representative farms and their economic viability, you want to click on that working paper. It has, it's a 100-page report that has a detail about the economic outlook for each of our representative farms. Our representative farm system uh, is set to uh, present the report or present the results of what the FAPRI baseline would look like if it comes to pass for each of our representative farms. The baseline analysis that we're doing is for 2014 to 2020. The analysis uses 14 and 15 as the actual prices and yields that the farmers in our panels receive on their representative farms, and that's a starting period for us. And then 2016 to 20 is going to be the forecast period that we're going to use. We classify our farms in three measures. We look at this in terms of definition of financial position. We classify them as either in good condition, marginal condition, or in poor condition. A good condition farm is one that has a less than 25% chance of a negative ending cash balance and less than a 25% chance of decreasing their real net worth or their real net worth being less than at the end of the period 2020 being less than what it was in 2014. A marginal farm would be one that has a 25 to 50 percent chance of a negative ending cash balance and the same probability of losing real net worth. A poor farm is one that has more than a 50 percent chance of a negative ending cash and a decrease in real net worth. Let's turn to the dairy baseline outlook here from FAPRI. Uh, what we've done is run this uh, FAPRI baseline projection through our representative farms, and as you can see from the map, we have uh, dairy farms scattered all over the U.S. Uh, in the major production regions. The FAPRI baseline projection, the average annual prices that they projected, uh, a little over $15 uh, in 2016, increasing a little bit over 1770 by 2020. Uh, if we go back, this is a summary of our, our baseline projections over the last five years. Uh, back in 2012, we took the FAPRI baseline and ran it through our representative farms, and we had a projection that roughly 60% of our representative farms would be in the good condition, the dairy farms. Uh, by 2013, when we reran the baseline, uh, things that we had high feed prices, as we recall, in 2013, and uh, so we uh, we saw a slight change. We had uh, one or two farms that were no longer classified as green, but uh, the red farms had overcome their cash flow problems, and so we got rid of the red farms at that time. 2014, we had uh, a little change here, and we had a couple of more farms fall into the red category because they had more than a 50% chance of a cash flow deficit. By 2016, today's baseline projection, we've got 60% of our farms classified in green, and we have 20% of our dairy farms classified in red. So although over half our farms are classified as good, we still have a couple of farms that are four of our dairy farms in marginal condition and four of them in poor condition, and that's because they've got cash flow deficit problems. Most of our dairies 
went with the minimum level of MPP for 2016 and the concerns we hear from our dairy farmers are their concerns it's a constant theme with our dairy farms is concern over the availability of good labor this is an individual stoplight chart for the dairy farms as you can see there's a lot of green up there we actually have 12 of our, of our 20 dairy farms classified as green by 2020 the four there that are are classified in red uh, the Washington dairy WAD 300 is a little bit small and uh, they're suffering from lack of economies of size on that dairy uh, the same is true with the two dairy farms in Vermont they they're constrained in their size uh, based on the land availability forage availability and labor availability and so they're experiencing some cash flow deficits there if you have questions about the dairy uh, results here in this baseline, you can contact AFPC.